Welcome to the Moon and You podcast. My name is Susan Hart. You are invited to lean in and listen to conversations and content that elevates and educates in hormones, financial literacy, menopause, esoteric subjects about the moon, stars, and ancient medicines, and always with the intent to grow and find peace within the female body. As always, and in the spirit of reconciliation, I acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea, and community. I pay my respects to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. Welcome to the Moon in You. Welcome back to the podcast. Today's theme is about honouring your temple. And we are talking about the full moon in Capricorn. The body is our home. It's a place where our energy resides. When you close your eyes, can you feel the rhythm and flow created by the breath? Are you aware of the fluids rushing through your veins? Can you notice the hairs on your skin rise and fall? Our body deserves our attention and gratitude for without it we would not be able to experience this human existence. The body is a temple that holds the most sacred thing on earth, your energy, your spirit, your soul. Our body is a structure starting off with the skeleton, then the muscles, sinews and organs, moving to the veins, arteries, nervous system, the brain and the skin. The layering of the body is complex, and yet somehow it works simply and efficiently to always bring itself back to homeostasis, no matter what we throw at it. Well, within reason, of course. I invite you to look closer at how you treat your body structure, particularly through this full moon in Capricorn, ruled by Saturn, a planet that emphasizes structure. I joined a gym to increase my cardio. I found a beautician to help me with my nail biting. I stopped dyeing my scalp and hair. Yes, dear listener, it still looks okay, with the silver coming through. I visit a masseur each month. I increased my yoga to four nights a week, I go to bed early and I rise with the sun. I found a kinesiologist slash physiotherapist, and her name is Fiona, who works with the body on many levels. The experience with Fiona took me by surprise. A kinesiologist works with energy, and a physiotherapist works with the body. One is in the world of modern medicine, and the other is in more of an esoteric alternative medicine. Combining these two is amazing. I've had such an amazing experience. So as my body was being spoken to through her touch, it revealed so many things. Intense feelings rose like a tsunami that swept me away into memories long forgotten. These feelings, as Fiona explained to me, were trapped in my body, or these energies were trapped in my body and coming up for release. Yes, I have had many x-rays and ultrasounds in the areas of pain that would not go and nothing showed up. So I am now a convert into kinesiology. I think there is something there to explore. So as Fiona continues to explain to me, the body does hold emotional energy and it can get stuck in many places within the body. In the hands of an experienced and educated therapist, the body can be encouraged to release the energy and healing can begin. So I've had two weeks now since my first therapy session and I feel lighter, I feel brighter. Yes, I still have a bit of neck pain and I have a little bit of a back pain, but I don't have the ache anymore. I can feel where the some of the joints are still inflamed, some of the neck area is still inflamed, but the overall aching has gone. I do put it down to the energy release. 
I, then mind you, it was a bit ugly. I mean, I was crying and it was a messy cry as well. But at the end of it, I felt accelerated. During this full moon in Capricorn, look at your own structure, your own body. Where can you improve the health of your body? How do you speak to yourself about your body? That is so very important. When you look at your body, listen closely to your thoughts and whispers. And you might look at your body in the mirror and go, like just sort of shrug your shoulders and go, and that's the sound of a disappointment. That's a whisper. Or when you look at your body, you might actually clearly say, oh my God, Sue, look at you. <laughs> just, just be aware, be conscious of what you actually say to your body. You might also find that most of what is being said comes from other people putting those thoughts there, in particular advertising and marketing. Because, you know, I mean, they want you to buy their products, In order for you to buy a product, there has to be a need for you to buy a product. So, of course, they're going to manufacture needs. I'm not saying that all marketers and advertisers do this, but a majority of them do. They invent problems. They then create ads that say that you have this problem. Therefore, their product will help you with your problem especially weight gain. I hope that makes sense. Here's a wonderful, wonderful Audrey Hepburn quote, which I think fits beautifully in with this full moon in Capricorn. The beauty in a woman is not in the clothes she wears, the figure that she carries, or the way she combs her hair. The beauty of a woman is seen in her eyes, because that is the doorway to her heart, the place where love resides. True beauty in a woman is reflected in her soul. Now let's move on to the full moon in Capricorn. My beautiful friend, Carrie Hurrigan and I, we often come onto this podcast and we share and talk about the full moon. She's not with me today. I'd like to share something with you that she wrote and I'd like to share it with you. No matter where our sun or moon is in our natal chart or birth chart, we are all affected by the full moon in Capricorn. Capricorns are the most hardworking signs of the zodiac. And when the full moon is in Capricorn, it digs in to work even harder. The full moon in Capricorn is an ideal time for getting things done, implementing processes to completing tasks, getting organized to pursuing your goals and career. You'll become clearer on what you still must do to achieve what you want while looking at what you've already done and how you will make the necessary adjustments to reach your goal. I like to call that tweaking. Sometimes you have to tweak certain actions in order to reach your goals in the time frame that you've allowed. Your feelings of perseverance and commitment will be more prominent and your drive will be heightened to succeed while having the full moon in Capricorn helping you through obstacles along the way. At this time, the Capricorn full moon faces the sun in Cancer, its opposite sign, with both signs correlated with feelings of security. While Capricorn finds security from our external world, Cancer asks us to check in with our inner world for feelings of security and safety. During this full moon in Capricorn, You may have to be tough and more disciplined with yourself. Know and trust that you can find balance between your inner and outer world. You will achieve both emotional and material security. If you've never had a birth chart before and you'd like to get a free one, Kerry Hurrigan has them for free. There is a link in the website blog. If you go on to the moonandyou.com, go to the journal area and click onto this blog, you will see that there is a link. So let's talk about some Capricorn facts. Again, these are from Kerry Hurricane. Capricorn ruling planet is Saturn. And Saturn is about time, structure, responsibilities. 
Capricorn ruling house is the 10th house. It's about integrity, responsible, achievement, self-control and discipline. Capricorn's shadow. Power hungry, materialistic, ambitious, unforgiving. Let's just pause and have a think about that. Sometimes when I read or other astrologers take on Capricorn, they always seem to talk about the shadow side, the lower vibrations. So if you find yourself stuck during this full moon in Capricorn, if you are power hungry, and that could be anywhere, that could be in the household. I know that I have a tendency to be power hungry in my household. We only have two in my household, my, me and my husband, or my husband and I. And there is sometimes it's a struggle. And my challenge would be during this full moon in Capricorn is to let go of the power struggle and just allow what it is to be materialistic. I mean, we have all had that moment where we want more than what we really need. So check in with yourself when you're about to buy something. You can just ask some simple questions like, do I really need this? Or am I buying it because I want to feel better about myself? Or... You don't really know why you're buying it. So just check in with yourself there. Ambitious and unforgiving. I like being ambitious. I think ambitious is a really good quality to have. But in this context, in the shadow side of Capricorn, sometimes being ambitious to the point of no return in relationships with your body, with your bank account. (laughs) Being ambitious, you need to be kind as well and not to become narcissistic about it and just do whatever you want for the sake of your goals while there are people around you hurting and you need to take them into consideration, especially around this time of the full moon. Self-control and discipline. So self-control for me is my overeating. Like, I love to eat. I mean, who doesn't? I mean, we're human. We love to eat. And I would eat sometimes, even when I'm not hungry, when I'm watching Netflix or Stan or any of the other streaming entertainment conglomerations we have out there. And... I would just sit and I would eat. And one thing that I've learned about going to the gym, my coach would say to me, Sue, it doesn't really matter how much work you do on that bike. If you do not stop the calories going in, the food going in, you won't lose any weight. I have 10 kilos to lose because I am a little bit heavy. And when you're menopausal, when you're postmenopausal, You know, carrying 10 kilos, it's very difficult to get off at our age. So if you are a younger woman listening to this podcast and you're carrying 10 kilos extra than you should, it is time. It is time to be self-disciplined and to get it off. Because as you age, it's going to get worse for you because you're carrying those 10 extra kilos. Your knees have to carry that. Your hips have to carry that. And although you're young now, think about your body, think about your structure 10, 20 years from now because it goes in a flash and suddenly you'll be like me saying, why didn't I do this in my 30s? Why didn't I do this in my 20s? Just stay fit all the way through your life. Be disciplined. Do it. This is one of the wonderful high vibrations of Capricorn, which is self-control and discipline. It's the unforgiving and ambitious that are the shadow side. So unforgiving, I want, I'd like to relate this to ourselves. If we are unforgiving of ourselves, so if we do something and we just are so, so hard against ourselves, I encourage you to forgive yourself. If you've let somebody down, 
Forgive yourself first and ask forgiveness. Human beings are amazing at forgiving. We have such empathy for people and for animals. When we become aware of their situation and their plight, we tend to have empathy for them. Capricorn symbol is the mountain goat. I love looking at mountain goats. They are so clever. Their hooves are amazing. Now they have a skill set because they have the tools. They have the feet and the legs to be able to go up a mountain. So whenever Capricorn comes around for me, I tend to think, what are the skill sets that I need to have in order to reach my goals? What are the skill sets? What has it been for you? What are some of the skills that you need to reach your goals? So the mountain goat, as I said before, they have these most amazing hooves and feet that can climb the mountains. They have agility. They have no fear. To have a think about that during this full moon. The Capricorn medical ruler is a skeleton, knees and joints. Now, we've talked about the structure as well. I'd like you to really consider how you care for your structure. How, what, what do you consume that supports the bone marrow, the bones, the joints, the knees? You might be a dancer. You might be a netball player. You might be a basketball player. And when you're young, that is fantastic. You know, you can go for 10, 20 years. But as you age, your skeletal system, knees and joints, don't fare so well. So take it easy out there. The Capricorn element is earth. It's practical. There's a sense of foundation. One thing that you could do is to go out into the earth barefooted and just feel the energy rising up from your feet to your knees, to your thighs, into your hips, into your breasts, into your neck, into your head, into your hands. And just spend some time with nature. Capricorn modality is cardinal, and that means it's an initiating action. It initiates action. This is a go-getter. You might feel that, but if you don't have anything to go after, you might put the energy into something else that could be detrimental to yourself. So that's why having a goal is fantastic at this time. And of course, the counterbalance sign is cancer. And when we talk about balancing signs, so Kerry would always teach me that whatever is opposite, it's always balancing each other out. And what I've learned about Capricorn and Cancer, thanks to my beloved friend Kerry, Cancer brings up the emotions in the body and you address it. Now, if you don't have a container, that's what Capricorn can do for you. Capricorn is a structure. It can be a container to hold all of those emotions and those feelings. And and that's how these two balance themselves out. Kerry has a fabulous podcast all about the full moon in Capricorn as well, so I do encourage you to go over and listen to that as well. Here are some helpful suggestions during the Capricorn full moon. I've made them all around the body. So the first one is book a massage. Journal everything you love about your body. I mean everything that you love. Put nothing in there about what you don't like, just everything that you love. Now, here's a couple of things from me. I love my eyes. I love my hair. I love my legs and my bum. That's about it so far. I've got a lot of torso image, body image work I've got to work on (laughs) because that's where I carry on my weight. So uh, my challenge during this full moon in Capricorn is to love my torso and love my breasts, love my back. And working through all of that. Go for a long walk. Spend time in the garden. 
or a park to connect you back to the earth. Stand in front of the mirror. I know it can, can be difficult, but stand in front of the mirror naked and just look. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to run. Just look at yourself in the mirror naked. If you can, some people can't even do that. I encourage you to do that. Write a love letter to yourself. Have a day off, shut yourself lunch. And ask someone to hug you. You would be amazed at how amazing leaning into a hug that you've asked somebody to give to you. It's really soothing. I did that with my therapist. And as an energy healer, she somehow just absorbed me into her. <laughs> it was wonderful. Okay, let's move on now to how the full moon in Capricorn coincides with your cycle. Now, this is week one. If you have your period during the full moon, like I used to, then this, is, this message is for you. Capricorn energy is magnificent. We can all agree on that. It will push you to do more during your menses week, even if you feel exhausted. If your period arrives during this full moon, allow yourself to feel the pull of the Capricorn energy, but focus it more on activities that don't require physical exertion. Remember your body is in repair mode and having to deal with the symptoms of menzies and pushing yourself physically will not serve you at all. Considering Capricorn is the medical ruler of the joints, you might like to look at this area of your body while you're in a more passive week of activity. As you age, you will soon realize that your joints need to be moved frequently. Finger joints, elbows, wrists, knees, toe joints. During this week, why not work with these areas as they are often overlooked? Now, week two. If you are in week two during the full moon in Capricorn, good on you. Fabulous time. This is a perfect combination of the Capricorn ambitious energy and the powerful feel-good hormone of estrogen. Because as you know, week two, estrogen rises from, say, day five right through to day 14. Capricorn energy will give you forward momentum, and estrogen will give you a feminine overhaul. So what do I mean by that? Well, estrogen gives us fuller breasts, shinier hair, glowing skin, sparkling eyes, quick brain activity, arousal feelings, happier moods, more outspoken and stronger. Endless su supply of endorphins, which is a natural painkiller, will help you hit any ball out of the park. So endorphins naturally occur with high levels of estrogen. This is the best week to charge ahead with your task list in hand. You have all the power this week. You are stronger, smarter and fearless. Go for it. Week three. So week three, if you are in this stage of your cycle through the full moon in Capricorn, this message is for you. The skeletal system is medically ruled by Capricorn, as we mentioned before. Let's explore this a little further and see how this vital system is affected during a menstrual cycle. A study found on the NCBI website has the following information and I would encourage you to click on the link in the blog and read it. Read the full article. The menstrual cycle is a complex process involving the interaction of the hypothalamus, the anterior pituitary, the ovaries and the uterus. The hormonal changes occurring during this cyclical process not only affect ulcetite maturity, and I spelled that double O-C-Y-T-E, maturation, and the endometrial and vaginal environments, but can also influence several other psychological and biochemical phenomena. They investigated the changes in serum calcium, magnesium, and inorganic phosphorus levels during different phases of the menstrual cycle in 50 healthy young women. We found subtle but significant variations in these levels in the menstrual, follicular, and luteal phases. The results showed that serum calcium level was highest in the follicular phase, whereas the serum magnesium level was lowest in the follicular phase. 
the serum inorganic phosphorus levels was highest in the menstrual phase. These variations could be due to the impact of changing estrogen and progesterone secretions on the parathyroid glands. Your body cannot make calcium, basically. The body only gets calcium it needs through the food you eat or from supplements. If you do not get enough calcium in your diet, or if your body does not absorb enough calcium, your bones can get weak or will not grow properly. Now, when looking at this type of research, you need to ask yourself a few questions. If calcium levels were highest during follicular phase, which is week one and two, what impact does low calcium have during the last week of my cycle? Considering calcium is so important for a healthy skeletal, it's worth investigating if your body is, is getting enough of it. So if you suspect something is wrong, I would go to your GP and ask if you can get your calcium levels checked. Have a look at the types of food that you're eating and what other foods are you absorbing that counteract any calcium absorption. You could go and take yourself to see a nutritionist or a dietitian or somebody who might be able to give you some sort of dietary guidelines to help with this calcium deficiency if you've got one. Week four. For those of you who have PMS during your week four, which is the last seven days of your cycle leading up to your menses again, oh, my heart is with you. My heart is there. I used to have the same thing. So this is week four. Are you aware that if you maintain optimum levels of progesterone after you ovulate around day 14, the dreaded symptoms of PMS may not occur? Further, are you aware that if you did not ovulate at day 14, you may not have any progesterone at all? And in that case, PMS and her sister, PMDD, could be quite acute. I would encourage you to examine this if you suspect your ovulation is not occurring. I reference Dr. Libby Weaver when she writes, It is critical for you to know, and often the assistance of a health professional is required, while you are not ovulating, rather than just treating for low progesterone. Simply treating low progesterone in this case won't resolve what is really going on. An ovulatory cycles. An ovulatory cycle is a menstrual cycle with no ovulation. This means an egg cell isn't released by the ovaries, which normally happens at the end of the first stage in the menstrual cycle, known as, known as the follicular phase. Helping the body to re-establish an ov ovulation pattern will, amongst other benefits, generate a healthier progesterone level. Dr. Weaver further points out that ovulation may not occur when there is a consistent, relentless output of stress hormones. Polycystic ovarian syndrome is present or there is a poor thyroid function. This is not necessarily a thyroid disease. The thyroid gland is not working properly. That's all that I mean there. So let's get balanced. Use the forward momentum of the Capricorn energy to take yourself to a health professional to see what you can do to alleviate your PMS symptoms. Now, if your doctor or health professional isn't aware of these things that I've shared with you, perhaps refer to Dr. Levy Weaver and some of the things that I've pointed out here. Love your body. Love the body you were born with. It's your temple. It's your home. And whatever you say to your body, it hears and responds. No matter how you compare yourself to other people, the most important thing is that you love the temple that you were born with. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoy this glorious full moon in Capricorn, whatever you're doing. And I shall see you on the next new moon. Take care. Bye for now.